you know what, it's occurred to me that I really get the opportunity to talk about house music, which I find to be a bugging shame given that it must be one of my pet genres of music at this point. Locking your attention into a repeating groove for a very long time proves that you can achieve a lot by not doing too much at a time. And even over the course of a 10 minute track with one repeating clickety click click groove as a foundation, you can still find yourself able to shift the course or mood subtly by adding or pulling things away. I don't know why I'm house explaining to you guys, it's not that difficult to understand. Kira Levansky is from Moscow and her music is fittingly quite cold, but this time thanks to some cranked up production value, it also hits a lot crispier as well, and yet her singing offsets that by echoing with a cavernous reverb all over it. For a detail so small, it's strangely jarring when layered on top of one another, why love being the prime example of this, but still being an endearing track on the album nonetheless by feeling like the logical midpoint between screechier manic rave music and hypnotic atmospheric deep house. Your Knee takes a little bit of time to really adjust itself, I know it's a house album at the core, but I'm not yet sure what kind of house record it's trying to be. November dub is a superbly sparse and breathy take on dub, but along the sirening synths of the title track and the endlessly groovy and sensual sky kisses, there aren't any gigantic leaps, rather unpredictable little bunny hops that leave you wondering what Levansky was exactly going for. It was when the deep mix of Your Need came on, which admittedly is quite late into the album, but that was when I realised what it's going for, which is... Uh, nothing in particular, really. I started to realise that when I start attaching predisposed expectations onto an album, in this case, expecting Levansky's music to be driven by some sort of bold, overarching idea, I end up accidentally confusing myself. So, Levansky isn't so much stringing these tracks together, more than she is toying around with the sound of wintry atmospheric house, illuminated by the glow of daylight and the ability for minimalist enchantment that very few have mastered, akin to DJ Sprinkles and the cricket outside my bathroom that won't shut the fuck up. Like I said about the traditions of house music, Levansky is achieving a lot with very little at a time, which is great. No track feels distracted by any one layer of itself, with the exception of the opener that shits itself at the very beginning with those loud raving synths, but the rest all adds up to a very engaging experience, at least when I decided to start again and listen with a fresher mind, resulting in fresher results. LED is a genuinely gorgeous ballad that operates on the gliding windy movements of the tracks prior. It was only a matter of time before something so soothing and free-spirited like that showed up. It's certainly a hasty album though, one that ends up being a little bit too short lasting in moments to allow them to even feel like moments, more like iTunes previews. I still think that it's a good album, benefited by the crisper production, every click of the percussion sounds therapeutic, and I really think the dub inspired beats open up a lot of creative possibilities. I'll drop it a 6 out of 10 for now, although it isn't the only fairly unique house inspired record I have to talk about in this video, there's also... <laughs> Without accidentally referring to a LEGO television series, I'll talk about Jargo. Let's say you stop this video right now and listen to this new Lafafa album right now. Judging from the opener, you'd think I was talking shit saying this was house inspired, because it is evidently a little bit more than that, instead representing Lafafa's upbringing in New Delhi and the South Asian musical inspirations he carries with him. Eventually the album becomes a lot more beat driven, with percussion tracking the underside of each moment on Jargo, but initially it begins as a droning harmonium piece, with his empowering baritone calling like a wistful bellow home. That's really the sensation of Jargo all throughout, that it is homely. It is warm, the chord progressions are uplifting and climb towards a grinning excellence. The build up during the first minutes of the album is fantastic, really feeling like you've been naturally brought into Lafafa's world instead of abruptly thrown into it like the contents of a quarter pounder combo bag. The first track and a half are an invitation, the rest is where the real fun begins. So when you hear the bass finally can open a dive into Chaco Chidia, it feels satisfying, you begin to like this guy a lot and the comfiness of Mir Sath becomes even more pleasant to listen to. I was surprised by how loungy this part of the album begins to sound. Usually that sort of venture ends up drowsing off taking a nap, while the rest of the instruments are left awkwardly wandering with no clue who to follow. Probably stoned. But Lafafa's songs stay sounding snappy and eclectic, so they still manage to catch a groove that at the least makes a bit of sense, a cute attempt at breathing some better life into a fusion that would have otherwise seemed a little bit like an eye-bagged snoozer. The xylophone, the church organs, B plus for effort. Candy brings back our old pal the harmonium for a wonderfully soft piece driven by a lightweight glitchy beat that mum would be proud of. Yes, both of them. The track is swallowed by a sudden vorteke of wind before dropping right into Din Rat, taking Lafafa's deep house inspirations by the, uh, carrot sprout? Uh, uh, I didn't want to say throat, too cliche. And really making some blissful beat work with all of that. Of course, topped by the man's milky voice. Synth glissandos trickle, some strings begin to swipe at the mix, it's all a supreme wonder. Again, a short album overall, but this time the tracks feel fleshed out, and like individually inspiring moments on their own, the kind that inspires me to drop it a 7 out of 10. Both these albums will still sound like inspired personal statements at the end of the day. Both seem to want to play around with different styles, influenced by the vision that their hometowns grant them, and allow them to fuse into their work. 
making for uniquely shaped takes on electronic music. One makes me want to turn on the bedroom heater, the other makes me feel as if it's already on and I'm having the nicest nap ever.